video we're going to talk about the difference between the Gilman and the Grignard reagent okay so if I take cyclo um this the cyclic ketone here and I add methyl magnesium bromide okay and we do it in some sort of acid we always do Grignard chemistry and acid we know that this bond is ionic so we create a generate a negative charge in our on our on our on our, on our carbon okay and we attack and in acid workup we attack and in acid workup we get the alcohol okay so this is our desired product this is what we'll get now so this is Grignard chemistry now if I take this same molecule here and I react it with Yeah, so we take that and react it in acid workup. Here's what I get. I get no reaction. Okay. Gilman chemistry do conjugate addition. Conjugate addition. Okay. Now, another okay, so that's 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 one difference. Okay. So let's look at another let's look at another difference, okay? If I take an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and I do Grignard chemistry on it magnesium bromide okay and acid workup is what I get I'm gonna create my alcohol my CHD I'm gonna keep my double bond so again you could definitely see that all we're doing is adding to the carbonyl all we're doing is adding to the carbonyl in Grignard chemistry but if, if I take the same molecule in contrast Okay, and I use my Gilman reagent. In acid workup, here's what I'll create. Okay, so I get the 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 beta product. So my 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 nuclear file will be will be added onto the beta carbon. So again. We know that the the hydrogen adjacent to the to the uh, to the carbonyl is very is the hydrogen it is very acidic. Okay, so we call those so we call that the alpha carbon containers those hydrogens, and then we have the 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 beta carbon just below. Okay, so we get relative to the ketone we have one two three so we get one three addition. Okay, so uh, so be very careful it, it adds on to the uh, to the to the beta to the beta carbon okay so that's another difference now if i take cyclohexene yeah if i take cyclohexene and i add uh let's use the same uh gilman reagent i get no reaction okay i get no reaction now why is that why is that why is that well If I'm looking at this, remember we said that if we had a ketone there, we would have gotten a reaction, right? If we had a ketone on this, we would have reacted. But why did not cyclohexone, cyclohexene react with the Gilman chemistry? Well, if I'm looking at the, 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 and I'm just gonna draw some resonance structure. It's because of resonance. So, if I'm looking at uh, just this part of the cyclohexene molecule, okay. I'm looking at just this part of cyclohexene molecule. I'm just going to replace this with an R because an R goes around. Okay. If I'm looking at this part of cyclohexene molecule, I could actually draw three resonance form. Okay. I could draw three resonance form. Okay. So this is in resonance with what? I could move these electrons. Okay. So I can move these electrons here. Yeah, okay. And I form the enolate type of uh, resonance, okay? Okay, and we have our R group here and we create a positive charge on that carbon, okay? And we have a double bond right there. So we create a positive charge on that carbon, we have our double bond there. So again, we, we could draw you know, a, plethora of, of, a plethora of resonance form and actually we could draw another one too. So coming from this, I could just simply 
move up these electrons without even touching these uh, touching these electrons right here. And so another resonance form of this would be an O minus with my plus charge here. Okay, so we could draw three resonance form of the the carbonyl adjacent to the alkene. So what does that tell us? It tells us that this carbon here is very electrophilic. It has a partial positive charge. It's very electrophilic. And so that's why we need a ketone adjacent to the alkene. And that's why we get that reaction. So if that is the case, then we know that with a ketone uh, alpha beta unsaturated uh, uh, carbonyl or ketone, we're going to get a reaction with, uh, with Gilman chemistry. Now, another striking difference between the two is the the idea of you know SN2 chemistry. Okay. If I take um, let's say this Gilman reagent. Okay. If I take this Gilman reagent, okay, and I add it with this is a simple SN2 target. Okay, I get this product. Okay, so this is the product that I get. So we get new carbon carbon bonds with good, you know, SN2 targets. This could even be a tosylate, it doesn't matter, okay? Now, what if I did the same thing with, you know, um, Grignard chemistry? So what if I took this monkey here, okay? And I react it with a uh, SN2 target, an acid, I get no reaction, okay? So Grignard chemistry does not work well for SN2 targets. Organic cooperates, right? Gilman chemistry works very well for SN2 targets. And another thing I want to point out is that Grignard chemistry, you know that we got to do this under conditions that are very, we have low water. We don't want any water around Gilman, uh, Grignard chemistry. And so what tends to happen is that uh, for, for Grignard, we get low yields. Yeah, we lose we lose a lot of our products because we got to do everything so fast, you know, all that stuff that takes into account. Well, given chemistry, this is clean chemistry, and so you get uh, higher percent yields uh, in the lab. 